Whatever you may think about Mino Raiola, be sure about one thing. He wouldn't give a damn. My father said to me when I was a small boy that 50% of the people in your life will love you and 50% will hate you, Raiola told The Athletic in 2021. I'm here to be loved by my family and by my players. The rest, I give a At the end of April, the 54-year-old died after a long illness. This, then, is the story of a life that ended too soon, but which was remarkable all the same. Born in Nocera Inferiore, southeast of Naples, and described with his own self-deprecating humour as the ugliest baby ever seen, he was raised in nearby Angry. In his novel, Hanno Tutti Ragioni, Oscar-winning film director Paolo Sorrentino calls it the worst province in the world. But the San Marzano tomatoes and mozzarella di bufala cheese produced around there are the ingredients that go into the best pizza on the planet. And that's what the Raiola family imported when they moved to the Netherlands and opened a restaurant called Napoli in Harlem, just west of Amsterdam. Raiola never made a pizza in his life. That's a myth. What is true is that he waited tables and washed floors. He worked long hours doing the dirty work. And as he got older, he came to be entrusted with the books and negotiations with the restaurant's suppliers. My speciality was untying knots in order to get Napoli the best deal possible, he said. The restaurant was his business school and university of life. When a customer ordered the most expensive bottle on the wine list but didn't look like he could afford it, Raiola was told to serve him anyway. The lesson was, don't underestimate anyone. It was a mistake many would make with Raiola. Zlatan Ibrahimovic did just that after walking into the Okura Hotel in Amsterdam to meet him for the first time. We'd booked a table there, and I really didn't know what sort of person to expect, he wrote in I Am Zlatan Ibrahimovic. But who the hell turned up? A bloke in jeans and a Nike t-shirt and that belly, like one of the guys in The Sopranos. Raiola's break in football came while patrons of Napoli were breaking bread. The headquarters of the Dutch FA was nearby and an Italian agent who used to bring players over from the Eredivisie to Serie A liked the food on the menu, as did a few footballers and the owner of the local football club. Little did they know that the guy topping up their wine glasses would become one of the biggest movers and shakers the game would ever see. After buying a McDonald's franchise and flipping it for a profit, Raiola formed a company called Intermezzo and entered the transfer market. The first deal Raiola ever did involved the hottest prospect in Dutch football at the time, Brian Roy, who moved from Ajax to Foggia in 1992. He phoned me from the restaurant, Foggia's former owner, Pasquale Casillo, recalls in the book, Two or Three Things I Know About Him. You're paying four billion lira for the player, he said, but I can get you him for two. And he did just that, cutting out the intermediary fees. He put me in direct contact with the Dutch Players Association. He was registered with them. The way Casillo remembers it, Raiola didn't even see himself as an agent at the time. He was critical of them. They were scoundrels and leeches. And now he's the king of the agents. 20 years ago, he was just a big obese kid. He used to beg me for a spin in my Ferrari. Pfft, you can, as long as you can get into it. Raiola moved out to Puglia with Roy and would drive him to and from training. Mino painted the walls of my house, the player recalled. Doesn't like it when I remind him of that now. On the back of that deal, Raiola would become the architect of Dennis Bergkamp and Wim Jonk, making the double switch to Inter from Ajax a year later. In 1996, he would bring Pavel Nedved from Sparta Prague to Lazio. Arguably, though, no foreign import to Serie A this century had more impact than another Raiola client, Ibrahimovic. The kid from the gritty Rosengard district of Urban Malmo saw himself in Raiola. When he asked Ajax teammate Maxwell to text the agent and set up a meeting, Ibrahimovic wasn't discouraged when a reply came back saying, tell this Slatan to go and f*** himself. It was a language he understood and respected. Raiola wasn't going to bring him a big move on a silver platter either. He told Ibrahimovic his stats were crap and a club like Juventus was never going to sign him unless he got serious. Time to ditch the Porsche for a Fiat, sell off his watches and hang the leather jacket up in the wardrobe. Raiola pushed him to the limit. It got me going, Ibrahimovic remembered, and it got me more of a winner's mindset. 
The result was the move he wanted. Upon seeing Raiola in Hawaiian print shorts, drenched in sweat after rushing to the meeting they'd set up to seal the deal in Monte Carlo on the weekend of the 2004 Monaco Grand Prix, Juventus general manager Luciano Moggi asked witheringly, What the hell are you wearing? But style never mattered to him. Substance did. The reflection staring back at Raiola never discomforted him, even amid public fallouts with Sir Alex Ferguson and Pep Guardiola. Fearless in standing up for his clients, they, for the most part, stood by him, regardless of the accusations of greed, self-interest and excess that peaked after Paul Pogba's 110 million euro return to Manchester United. The commission from that transfer, revealed by the hacking platform Football Leaks, served as one of the motivations for FIFA to toughen up the rules, reintroduce a licensing system and propose a cap which united the game's super agents in protest. I know where I come from, and I know in which world I live, Raiola told The Athletic. And I'm not saying I work harder than a mine worker, but my luck is that I work in an environment that became a multi-billion industry. Whatever the outrage at the vast amounts of money he was perceived to take out of the game, whatever disconnect there was between a super agent like Raiola and the public, the empathy he was able to strike up with some of the next big things in football remained undiminished. It is enough to think of Matthias de Ligt, John Luigi Donnarumma and Ryan Gravenberch to name but a few. And on the day Raiola's death was announced, Borussia Dortmund striker Erling Haaland, another client, was succinct in his tribute. Two words and a photo of them together were all he tweeted. The message simply read, The best. The kind of esteem that mattered to Raiola. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. They're a journalist dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.